The time between the end of year 8 and the beginning of year 9 was one of the most memorable times for me. Not because I achieved anything amazing, but because it was probably the lowest point of my life. I'm not going to exaggerate and say I was depressed or anything, but I wasn't happy either. School seemed like a chore, socializing was difficult, and I was borderline fat. At the time, I thought it was just who I was. I thought my life was just going to be like that. But then I stumbled across a video that changed my life. Now, I don't remember the title of the video or who made it, but I remember that it was about sleep and how it is one of the most important elements of your health. I stopped staying up late, I woke up at consistent times every day, and I just tried to improve the quality of my sleep. And that's when I saw a boost in my social life, a boost in my health, I lost 14 kilograms that year, and also a boost in my grades. That's why improving the quality of your sleep is something that I always preach in my videos. At first, you might think that my channel is just for studying techniques, but it goes way beyond that. I started my channel to help you get the highest grades possible and that includes studying techniques but also includes other external factors like sleep, exercise and diet which is why I always preach improving your sleep quality and why I'm dedicating a whole video for it. The first thing you need to know about sleep is that it's not continuous, it's in cycles. The next time you go to sleep, wear a watch. You're gonna notice that you're gonna wake up a couple of times naturally throughout the night. Every time you wake up, take a mental note of the time. You'll notice that the duration between each time you wake up will be around 90 minutes. And that is the average length of a sleep cycle. Now you never want to wake up in the middle of a sleep cycle because you'll just be groggy and tired the whole day. Our bodies are not designed to be woken up by alarms. We would naturally wake ourselves up. And you usually wake yourself up at the end of a cycle. But when you set an alarm, it will wake you up at the exact time you set it. And using a bit of probability, you'll notice that it will probably be inside of a cycle, not at the end of it. Now imagine that every day. Every day you'll wake up groggy because you didn't finish a cycle when you woke up. Even if you sleep 8 hours every single day. If you wake up in the middle of a cycle, you'll feel tired every single day, and so it'll be harder for you to study. And if it's harder for you to study, your grades are gonna go down. So what's the solution? Well, in an ideal world, we wouldn't use alarms at all, but we know that's not realistic, so here's the best next solution. Go to this website called sleepcalculator.com before you sleep. It will tell you the time you should set your alarm so that you increase the likelihood that it will be at the end of a cycle. Now, usually this is not 100% accurate. My sleep cycle is probably not the same exact length as yours. And on top of that, sometimes you'll lay in bed for 5 minutes and you'll fall asleep, and other times it will be 30 minutes or 40 minutes, so you can never accurately predict it. So you should always have a clock or a watch around you. I usually wear this cheap smartwatch just when I sleep, I'll link it below in the description if you want, and I make it a rule that if I wake up within 60 minutes of my alarm or less, I'll force myself to get up. Now this is hard because your body will try to convince you to go back to sleep, your body doesn't know that you've set an alarm in 60 minutes. It thinks that it's going to complete another cycle. But you know that your alarm is going to go off in 60 minutes or less, which means you'll wake up in the middle of a cycle and you'll be tired. So it's worth it to wake up at the end of a cycle even though you'll get less sleep. Or something else you need to take to account when it comes to your sleep to make your studying as efficient as possible is the time you sleep and wake up every single day. If you want consistent sleeping patterns, which will optimize your, your brain for studying, you need to wake up and sleep at the same time every single day. I know it sounds difficult, but I try to sleep at 9.30pm or 10pm every day, even on the weekends. It might sound weird, but I'll explain why. Your body has its own internal clock called the circadian rhythm, and it tries to abide by it. Now, your body loves consistency. Think of it as some sort of machine. You try to feed it data by sleeping and waking up at the same time every single day, and then it realizes that, well, that's the time when you sleep and wake up. But if one day you sleep at 9pm and then the next day you sleep at 2am, you've now confused it. Your body doesn't know when you're going to go to sleep, and so it doesn't know when to release certain hormones which will optimize your sleep and make it as high quality as possible, so that the next day you could study efficiently. People don't realize this, but it's better for you to get 6 or 7 hours of sleep every single day, while waking up and sleeping at the same time every day, than sleeping 8 or 9 hours every day, but your sleeping pattern is inconsistent. When you constantly change your sleeping schedule, you never give your body a basic foundation to work with. It might sound like bro science, but I'm telling you, this is what works. Just try this for the next 2 weeks. Sleep and wake up at the same time every single day. And by around 5 days into this experiment, you'll notice that your energy will be through the roof and your studying will be more efficient because your brain is just working better. Now another mistake people make is that they don't consume caffeine in the right way. Maybe you're doing your GCSEs right now and you might not know that many people that drink coffee from your cohort. But trust me, when you get to year 12 and year 13, you will feel like everyone is drinking coffee. A coffee in itself is not bad for you, but like anything, you could easily misuse it. Now according to the FDA, the half-life of caffeine is around 5 hours. That means that if you drink a cup of coffee at around 5 p.m., by the time you want to sleep at 10 p.m., half of the caffeine will still be in your system. It's not only lurking in your system, it's affecting your quality of sleep and how fast you get into sleep. That's why if you want to drink coffee, make sure that you drink it before 2 p.m. and ideally way earlier than that. 
coffee can be a very powerful tool. It can give you a lot of energy that you can use to study. But at the same time, if you use it wrong, you'll wake up groggy the next day because the quality of your sleep will be affected. And if you wake up groggy, then you can't study the next day or you can't study, but your studying will be very inefficient. And don't try to convince yourself that you're different because you can drink a cup of coffee at 8 p.m. and still go to sleep easily. Even if you can still go to sleep easily, it's going to affect the quality of your sleep and you'll wake up groggy the next day. And guess what you do when you wake up groggy? You're going to reach in for the cup of coffee again. And it's a whole cycle that keeps on going. Now, finally, use light to manipulate your sleeping patterns. Before the age of artificial screens and light, our body used to use the sun to know when to make us tired and sleepy and when to make us energized. When the sun went up, that was the body's cue to give you energy and give you motivation so that you could conquer the day. And when the sun went down, that was your body cue to unwind and make you feel a bit more tired so you can go to sleep, rest, and do the same thing the next day. That's why the Stanford neuroscientist called Andrew Huberman recommends that the first thing you should do when you wake up is to expose yourself to as much light as possible. Ideally, you should go outside in the sun, but if it's too cloudy or you woke up before sunrise, then try to turn on as many lights as possible in your house. You'll notice that that will accelerate the waking up process and it will make you more energized and motivated to go and study. And the opposite is also true. Before you go to sleep, you need to expose yourself to as little light as possible. I will tell your body that it's time to sleep. It will start pumping in the hormones that make it so that your sleep quality is better and all that stuff. Around an hour before your bedtime, try to dim as many lights in your room as possible. Try using just a lamp, for example. And this is the tip I struggle with the most, but try to use your phone as less as possible. I've seen people try to use night shift and blue light blockers, but I've seen many experts say that they don't really do much. So if you want to use them, you can use them, but don't expect that much. Using the tips I shared with you will boost the quality of your sleep tenfold, and it will boost your grades and performance in school and also outside of school. I know this for sure because I'm speaking from experience. Also, most of the information I used from this video was taken from a book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. I've recommended it many times on my channel, and if you want to buy it, I'll link to it down in the description.